All right, so Miss Mary Kay. Yes. <laughs> what was going on in your life before you ran into my work? Um, well, kind of backtracking, I, um, I started, um, when I went through my second divorce, um, I, I learned about narcissism because I went to therapy and found out that uh, both my, um, my current husband at the time and my ex and my father were all narcissists. So um, at that point, I started to educate myself about it, um, then went through that divorce and then ended up getting divorced yet a third time. <laughs> and uh, after that, um, really... Through therapy, actually, that last therapist had said, okay, you yeah, got to stop marrying your father. So really tried to um, understand more about that and um, eventually came across your work and <clears throat> uh, watched it for a few months and then decided, actually, it was three days before my 50th birthday to have my, my first session. So realizing all this time that, you know, the I am not enough stuff was really what was the crux of it and never really hearing that or, or clicking with that with any anybody or anything else. Yeah. So. And that's that's very common because adult children of alcoholics and children from emotionally abusive homes, um, it's their norm to walk around feeling like they're off. Yes. It's their yeah. norm not to look at their family and perhaps think what's wrong with them. It's just such our norm to feel disconnected from self. So I can understand how you know, um, in your life, you know, you're going at 100 miles an hour and things aren't really working out, but you really don't know to be reflective and think about being the adult child of an alcoholic. It mm -hmm. never even clicks. No. Never even clicks. So when you, um, the message, how did you feel when you started to understand all the ACOA stuff and the childhood emotional neglect stuff? Um, well, putting, putting together the pieces is what was the biggest thing for me, just, um, going back and, and even talking to my mom and, and, and childhood friends and kind of really seeing what, what my childhood was and what the family dynamics were and even finding out through how, what my grandparents were like, right. um, that I never knew. But since my dad had passed recently, I was able to talk more about it and, uh, find out more about it and, and figure out. The pieces of um, and, and put it together, kind of in an ancestry yeah. <laughs> kind of situation. So to see, you know, no wonder things came out as they did, just right. with the, those dynamics. And uh, so that that was very very helpful for me. So it doesn't sound like you were very much aware that you didn't feel like you were good enough, and that you had never you, no. you had never lived up to the expectations of your dad, or you know. Uh, no, I was. Totally not aware, <laughs> and totally, um, yeah, I totally didn't feel, I, I couldn't feel. I was not, even though I was the most empathetic person would do anything for anybody, I just was not aware and did, could not really feel me. Right, so. you couldn't feel your emotions. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was really inside of me, and just to see really what happened until I started getting deeper into to the work. So it sounds like you were... Um, is it fair to say that before, like we started coaching, is it fair and this kind of coaching work? Is it fair to say that um, you were living below the veil of consciousness? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I was reacting. To, I just, I just was reacting to everything. I wasn't. I wasn't truly living. I, right. I just wasn't. So. Right. Yeah. And that's sad. And it's it's mm. kind of wobbly when you begin to realize you really weren't living. No. Yes, it was. I mean, it was, yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Like, <laughs> exactly. Where have I been? Like, right. who have I been? You know? And I remember that being a little fuzzy for you. Like, like what, very, uh, it was difficult. I remember it being difficult for you to understand, to process, really. Like, I have been living out of this program. Yeah. And I have been doing and achieving out of this program. Yep. You know, um, and really not, we talked about how, you know, you were doing a lot of things and there being a lot of bedroom clutter and it really not being the norm for you to ask, is this working for me? No, I never, I just always thought of, 
everybody else and not only, you know, clients, friends, my children, my dogs, <laughs> yeah. you know, every, everything came first and just literally at the end, then, uh, overachieving and work just, just to kind of mask the whole, the whole, what was going on really just to, just to keep going. We tend to be running from an emptiness we can't name. Yes. And if you're, when you're, uh, remember the five stages of emotional liberation or denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Mm -hmm. So when you and I, when you started doing this type of coaching work, it was coming through the denial. Yes. Realizing, wait a minute, where was I? And now we started working on, well, why was I unaware? What mm -hmm. were the dynamics that created? How important was it for you to be able to create distance um, from your emotions? I mean, when we began doing the discovery work about your real wounds, about I am not enough, especially mm -hmm. with dad, mm -hmm. how important was it for you when to realize that you were not that feeling, that that feeling had been given to you? You were made to feel that way. Oh, it was huge. I mean, just to, to learn all the detachment and to just separate myself from that 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 feeling and to be able to name it and and you know, absolutely huge. <laughs> that's that's a big part of healing from codependency because you know until we're able to and so many people struggle with being able to say my mom did this and my dad did that my mom said that my mom did that because it's this whole honor thy mother and father thing. Right. Now, the problem with that is that until we're able to just cognitively understand the child's story and objectively understand what happened to the child, we stay attached to that loyalty. Mm -hmm. And in being in a, attached to that loyalty, then we're not able to have the experience. How, right. what, was, what was my inner child's experience of that time? And if we can't experience it, then we can't really label it. And if we can't label it, we can't take the shame sweater off. We can't say, but you were given that label, dear one. Right. So I remember that being really, really key for you, understanding I was made to feel this way. That's why I feel this way. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm asking you is like when you, I remember when you began to understand why you were running on empty. Right. You began to understand why you kept trying to achieve and why you kept trying to take care of other people that you were seeking the validation that you never really got. Yeah, well, it was yeah, it was basically from that and and, and other childhood dynamics. Yeah. Um, just trying to, like I said, trying to well be good enough or achieve um, just endlessly, just to, to just keep keep up with trying trying to do that. But it can it can never happen. And then at that point, trying to it just finally clicked. Like I'm never going to make everybody happy, and and I have to make me happy first before I can make anyone else happy. And and you know, truly love somebody and, and be there yeah. be there for myself and for my children and <laughs> everybody. So, um, yeah, I just had to, the tools you gave me to slow things down, to de declutter um, both around my surroundings and, and just other parts of my life helped to simplify things and then eventually to stop. And, and we also, part of the, a big part of the process is, especially for those of us who are in big denial, especially adult children, alcoholics, and children from emotionally neglectful homes, you know, when you've been beaten, which is terrible, but, well, even then, sometimes people who are beaten don't really accept that that's abuse. They just mm -hmm. think that's how, how life is. Um, right. But being able to identify, wait a minute, that was abusive, Mm -hmm. pulls you out of the child role because the child feels responsible for it. And in order to heal from codependency, we've got to rescue these inner child, inner children and help them see they were abused. Right. You know, whether you were smacked or sexually molested or ignored, it's abuse. And you may still be stuck in that pattern trying to seek approval from mm -hmm. pseudo mommies and daddies. Mm -hmm. And so that's really, really important. What would you say, because um, I'm trying to help people understand that, you know, this coaching program isn't a Xanax. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not like a shot of tequila. It's mm -hmm. not going to make you feel good for an hour and then that's it. You have to, if you want to feel good, you have to work this program. Right. You know, it is a process. Absolutely. And it's a process. And the reason people like you and I have to look at it that way is because our subconscious mind, it's default setting is to not take care of self. Right. And so it's exciting. So um, how do you feel about now going through the coaching and working with me on one-on-one? How do you feel 
in comparison today to the way you used to feel looking back now? Uh, totally night and day. It's, <laughs> it's been an incredible journey. Um, the, the things you had me work on with working with fear and, and judgment and all, all those things to look at it in my own, in my mind and, and see those things are now dissipating or, awesome. you know, and, uh, um, I just, um, I'm just so much, uh, more clear every day, <laughs> clear my head more and point more, um, just, just, just so much more, more happy. I just, uh, <laughs> how connected do you feel to the universe? How connected do you feel to everything now? Uh, <laughs> uh that's been a whole nother thing. <laughs> uh, it's been huge. I mean, starting when we started early, you know, early on, um, I would meditate outside on, on my screen porch and just see nature and see the sun every day. And I, I used to be one that, you know, when I was driving in the car and the sun would come through, I'd throw on my sunglasses, right. put the visor down and be like, stop sun. Right. <laughs> but now it's just, it's incredible. Just yeah. to have, um, just be one with everything yeah. is it just, and to know that we are just all one. I'm able just, to um, understand now that versus not feeling enough and not being aware that this, this is the key because so yes. many of us don't feel like we're enough when we're not even aware we feel that way. Right, right. It's so important. Yes. Um, I would say a large majority of the population is unaware they don't feel like they're good enough. Pleasing. And all their reactivity and all their shame and their guilt below that is, I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. And when you have the added dynamic of being ignored as a child, you don't know to look inside and pay attention to that because your programming is ignore what I feel. Yes. What I feel is unimportant. What I feel is stupid. Mm -hmm. What I feel doesn't matter. So it's <clears throat> it's so multi-layered. Yeah. Multi, multi -layer. And then if you have the, the brain is working on a pleasure principle where you, you did well in school, so scholastics brought you some type of pleasure. Mm -hmm. So that became that became sort of like the treat. I'll follow that. I'll just keep doing that. I'll keep doing that. <laughs> because at least it brought you some type of pleasure. Yeah. But True. it's still it's still motivated by I'm not enough. Yes. Yep. I'm still motivated, but I'm not enough. And so it sounds like you and my this program that I'm creating is three phases. It's the um, phase one is awakening, phase mm -hmm. two is accountability, mm -hmm. and phase three is ascension. So you are in the ascension. Mm -hmm. In the ascension phase, you realize that you are enough. Yes. And that we're all enough. Yes. And you're highly conscious of that fact now. Mm -hmm. And before, when you were in the awakening phase, especially early on, you were in denial of how unaware you were and in denial even of the childhood experiences and what they meant. Absolutely. And in denial of I am not <laughs> enough. Because more than likely, if I would have met you at a dinner party, you know, six, seven months ago, and I said to you, oh, you know, oh, what do you do for a living? You told me. And I asked you, so do you think you're enough? You'd probably say, yeah, I'm good enough. I'm good enough. <laughs> you know, I do good in my job. You have a nice house. Yeah, I'm, I'm good enough. I think I'm good enough. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But because your experience, you were never taught to look within. You never. really feel from a heart space. Nope. So that was an intellectual answer you would have given me versus a heart answer. Yeah. So you have gone from a head space in the awakening phase, living from the intellect. Mm-hmm. Now you're living from the heart space. Yeah, looking back, I just really just never had self. I just yeah. and I just and that's that's um, been the biggest thing just to discover that and yeah. <laughs> and then like I said, I never to have felt my feelings. You know when I think about that, how screwed that is. Yeah. <laughs> but I never did truly feel that. I was also outerly yeah. doing everything and and like you said in denial and and just um, that I just never stopped and said, what's going on in here? And, and, and uh, to, to feel that. <laughs> talking about a very common thing, dissociation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, good little children, well, what society and most parents would consider good are children who dissociate. They're mm -hmm. children who don't pay attention to how they feel or don't act the way they really feel. So they're in a reality. They might be terrified, but they're not acting that way. Mm -hmm. You know, dad could be come scream, screaming, running down the staircase with a belt in his hand. But yeah. children freeze 
and they learn to stuff that emotion. And if you do that long enough, the brain learns that, okay, stuff, okay, freeze, okay, don't react, okay, don't feel. And it becomes a way of life. Yeah. Yeah. And part of that with me, too, was, you know, I was taught to um, just, well, my parents weren't, didn't rarely ever hug me, rarely said I love you. Um, and it just, uh, you know, I know that was a definitely you know, a big deal, but just to be criticized, even, um, with things you did, no, no matter what I did, it was never, never good enough. So, right. you know, that just, and to now, you know, understand that and, and know that now truly that I always was good enough, right. um, you know, has been the jump of, yeah. of that. Cause it just, uh, you know, when you, when you think that way and that's, that's all you knew, that's yeah. all you knew. So. Yeah, and we're we're hypnotic from zero to about eight, seven, eight huh? are hypnotic. And so, huh? you know, what a lot of parents don't, and I hope that this turns people around also, what a lot of people don't realize is that there's this, there, it, you can be ab abuse a child by omission, mm -hmm. by not saying you're beautiful, by not saying you're so smart, by not saying you're good, by not saying, you know, I care about you, by not saying mommy loves you, mommy appreciates you, daddy appreciates you. You know, daddy thinks you're awesome, you know, by not saying, I'm sorry that you feel that way. That's mm -hmm. abuse by omission yeah. because that's devaluing a child. Mm -hmm. And I heard a therapist say recently, he said, when you reduce a child to a non-feeling reality, mm -hmm. you reduce them to an animal existence. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm so happy that, you know, you've come through it and you're in the ascension mm -hmm. phase. Yeah. Thank you. And again, you're another person like my last Valerie. You, your trajectory is this. Mm -hmm. You're unstoppable. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely as, as long as you keep asking yourself, "What does Mary Kay need? What does Mary Kay need? What does Mary Kay mm -hmm. need?" And remember, you know, and I really believe this that you know, when it comes to love, you know, all of us as light workers, we want to give love. Mm -hmm. The more love you have for self, the more you're able to give. Because if you don't have love for self, you're really not giving love. Right. You're recreating a childhood pattern. You think it's love. Mm -hmm. But love really has to do with feeling connected to other people, but primarily yeah. to self. Yeah. And I find now, too, just with having the connection now, even with dealing with my children or clients or friends, mm -hmm. there's a whole nother deeper level that I'm at with yeah. them, with mm -hmm. dealing with them and, and feeling because without before not feeling, not having any, you know, feeling <laughs> the, um, I wasn't able to in good and bad ways feel the extra good things with people or people that weren't in my best interest, be able right. to feel those bad vibes and know to stay, stay away from. Them. So Absolutely. I'm attracting more, just so many more like-minded and, and people that just, that I'm, that are, it's wonderful. <laughs> That's awesome. been the other process of having um, negative people drop away and, and positive people come into my life. And um, that's, and like I said, just relating to everybody and everything at a much, like a, just a notch or two deeper <laughs> level that, that can't be explained, but it's just, it's just awesome just having that connection. So, so wonderful. <laughs> so how is, we'll just wrap it up. How, how has, you know, in, um, in everyday life, um, what do you think has been the biggest takeaway from this type of coaching for you? Um, well, that, that basically, you know, every, everybody, I don't know. I just feel like everybody should know this. <laughs> Everybody's walking around and they don't, they don't, they don't see how, yeah, I mean, how I used to be, <laughs> they don't know, they don't know this. And it, I just feel like just telling the world <laughs> yeah. that, that, you know, that they don't, that life can be so much better, that, yeah. that life doesn't have to be so hard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just, now I just feel so geez, where before everything was just so freaking hard <laughs> yeah. and it doesn't have to be, it can, it, it just can be this way. And that, um, given the tools that you have, you know, people can, um, there's no reason everybody can't right. Right. <laughs> can't, can't um, get through this and, and and be in a better place. Yeah, so it sounds like what you're talking about is that it is possible to be in alignment. Oh, absolutely. It absolutely. is possible to be in alignment and the universe is abundant. Absolutely. Souls are abundant, mm -hmm. but the minds have been messed with. Absolutely. 
and the heart has been ignored. And when we get our emotional side and our intellectual side in balance, we can mm -hmm. experience abundance. Absolutely. That's awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> Well, you're, you are telling the world, Mary Kay, so that's really good. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. <true. laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. You're welcome. You okay. did awesome. Codependents don't feel comfortable telling the truth. Because we have been programmed to worry more about others than ourselves, we often deny self, and in doing so, lie to ourselves and others about who we are and what we need. Today, I will practice being honest, at least with myself. I will not allow myself to say yes when I mean no, or no when I mean yes. I can tell the truth. I can nurture self. I can be good to me. I am worthy. I am good. I am enough. Oh.